Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you are checking out a Logic Pro X tip and trick tutorial video on ADSR. In this video, I'm going to show you how I think you can get the best results to do. Uh, we're going to be looking at how you can get really good results time stretching in Logic Pro X. So get, I get this question quite a bit, and I've, I watched a couple tutorials on YouTube, and I thought, well, this is kind of funny that, that uh, they didn't talk about certain key elements to doing this correctly and getting good results, especially with acapellas. So I thought I'd do a video on it. So most people will know if you're a Logic Pro X user, you have a few different options to time stretch audio. And a lot of a lot of people seem to be using the flex time tool now to do it. And I think that's one of the worst ways to do it because the flex time tool in Logic can really quickly and easily add artifacts and weird sounds or weird pops to your to your audio. So I'm going to talk about how I do this from start to finish in this video. So first things first, go to Logic Pro X, go to preferences. And we're going to go to advanced. You want to make sure that you have show advanced tools on audio, MIDI, and advanced editing all selected. Otherwise, you won't see some of these options I'm about to show you. Now, the next thing. You need to know and understand that you can't take a audio file that was recorded at, say, 85 beats per minute and speed it up to 130 beats per minute and expect it to still sound good. Either it's going to sound like a chipmunk, which is fine, or it's going to have a lot of artifacts and aliasing. So there's different ways to pitch and speed up audio. Time stretching is actually attempting to, for most most people will describe it nowadays as, it's going to try to keep like the timbre and pitch of the source audio and play it back at a speed that isn't speeding up or slowing down the pitch. So for instance, if you've ever used like a simple sampler and you put something on C1 and then stretch it down with the mapping editor down to like C0 and then up to C2, C2 is going to be, a shorter dur duration than C1 because it's stretching, it's pitching it up to do that. It's changing the pitch, the playback speed. So if, if you want like a chipmunk vocal, this becomes a lot easier. This tutorial is more aimed at people who want to keep the vocal or to keep the source audio sounding as close to how it was recorded in the sped up or slowed down version. So just be aware that you're not going to be able to change tempos like that by about more than 10 to 15 beats per minute either way. And if you can, be conscious of double time and half time. So if you're trying to find like an acapella to work with and you're making like trap or future bass, try to find something that was recorded near it. So for instance, let's say you want to make a progressive house track or something at 128 beats per minute or 130. Try to find a vocal or acapella that was recorded at like 135, 120 so you can get like pop songs, that sort of stuff. So then when you're snapping it to 128, 130 beats per minute, you're not changing it by 20 or 30 beats per minute. There's also this cool little halftime or double time thing you can do. I like taking vocals that I know were recorded at like 70 to 80 beats per minute and then popping that into a track that is 140, 150, 160 beats per minute because it's just halftime, it's just double time or halftime. So if I have a vocal that was recorded at 80 beats per minute, okay, and I wanted to make like a trap track that's 160, I actually don't have to do anything to the, to the, to the time stretch, right? Because 80 times two is 160. So it's really easy to do. Um, you just ch ch take your BPM up here and change it to 160, pop it in, don't have it import the tempo, but make sure you have it set up to the region markers or make sure you have it starting at where it started at initially and your downs are on beat and you don't have to do anything to it. So it's really nice and easy to do that. Now let's say you have a song that's like 75 beats per minute, right? Which times two is 150 and you want to work in a BPM of 140. Well, don't time stretch and what we're going to look at in a minute from 75 to 140 because this is going to destroy the quality of your audio. You'd want to time stretch. So if you want to be at 140, divide 140 by 2. That's 70, right? So then you're just time stretching the audio from 75 to 70, which is going to keep it intact and not make it sound like ass. All right, so that being said, that's the first thing you need to be aware of is you're just not going to be able to change this from like, oh, like 20, 30 beats per minute if you want to keep the audio sounding as close to how it was. Second thing you need to be conscious of is the, the BPM. If you don't know the BPM, you really got to figure out the BPM. And don't use Logic's BPM counter, especially on things like acapellas. It just won't figure it out. It'll figure it out on drum grooves, but it will not figure it out on acapellas. And the reason why I don't think you should use that is because there's other ways to figure out tempo. I personally like to use a BPM counter on my phone. I just tap it. I use a quick tempo tapper, I think it's called. Let me pull it up real quick. And it's free, and it's on Android and iOS. It's called Quick Tempo, and it, the logo has like a little 120 BPM on it. And I'll just play the track and kind of count with it, and I'll get a good ballpark estimate. 
So let's look at this now. I'm going to pull an acapella in. Let's find an acapella. Found one right here on my desktop. How lucky is that? All right. So if Logic gives you this option to import the uh, audio information or the, the, the tempo information, say import. And don't do markers typically, but it just imported it. And my BPM was at 120, and now it's at 133. So I know this acapella is at 133 beats per minute. So I already found the tempo. If that doesn't work, try to use like a BPM counter. So I'm going to go back to 145 because that's what I want to work at in this track. So now this is not going to be in tempo. I can hear whispers far away. I can hide, but I'm... Right, it's not in tempo. So we're going to, because it's at 133, my, my session's at 145. So here's how you can do this, and this will get you the best results every time. Double click on it, and then you might be looking at the track. Click on File. And under File, you go to Functions, go to Time and Pitch Machine. You want this if you're working with an acapella. There's different algorithms, but you want it on mode free and you want it on algorithm complex. Sometimes I'll have it on percussive or rhythmic material if I'm changing like a drum groove or a drum break. But for the most part, I'll keep it on complex. Now the original I know is 133, okay? And my destination, I want it to be 145. And we are going to, we want the, that's length and samples. We're not gonna change the pitch. We could if we wanted. But let's just change, like, let's say we're going to keep the song in the same key. We're just going to hit process and paste. It's going to do its thing. Okay. And it might get a message that one or more audio files change in length. That's fine. So now let's turn on our click and listen to this. I can hear whispers and far away. I can hide, but I'll try. I see the walls are caving in. All right, it's pretty good, and I think it's, because I actually recorded this, I do know it was at 133 beats per minute originally, so this is going to work. Uh, I might need to change some things because it seems like there's some swing with the vocal. Uh, maybe the vocal wasn't on perfect time to start with, and that's something you have to be aware of. It's very rare to have any audio material that is 100% on grid, even from its source BPM, but this is going to sound a lot better than doing flex time and using monophonic or slicing to move things around. And again, it's really helpful to know the source BPM and be aware that you're not going to be able to change the tempo drastically, the BPM drastically without just ruining the quality of the audio. So let's uh, let's undo this and I'll show you what I mean. Go to edit. We'll go to undo time and pitch machine. Okay, so let's go back to time and pitch machine. And let's say this was 130, right? And I want to take it to... Uh, 185. Say process and paste. All right, and let's listen. I can hear whispers and far away. I can hide, but I'll try. I see the walls are caving in, but I'm not ready to fly. I mean, it still did a pretty good job, but it's not something I would I would use in a track personally. But this is how this is the easiest way to do it, in my opinion in Logic Pro X. So there you guys go. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, my name is Echo Soundworks. I'll see you guys next time.